For more than a decade now, Guerrilla Games has been synonymous with high-performance in-house technology. Based in Amsterdam, Guerrilla has produced five games in the Killzone series, with each installment pushing the boundaries of real-time visuals on console hardware. Last December, this technology platform finally received a proper name, Decima. Now with its latest game, Guerrilla is taking its engine to new places by embracing a massive open world environment without compromising on fine detail. Just what is this engine truly capable of at this scale? And what is it that led Kojima Productions to select this powerful toolset? This is John from Digital Foundry, and today we're going to explore the ways in which Decima helps bring the world of Horizon Zero Dawn to life, how it runs across both models of PlayStation 4, and more. Let's get started. Let's start with the basics, shall we? As expected, Horizon Zero Dawn supports both the PlayStation 4 and, of course, the PS4 Pro. When using a standard PS4, the game operates at a full HD 1080p resolution while employing effective anti-aliasing with moderate texture filtering, producing a very clean image overall. It looks great, of course, but when you fire it up on the PS4 Pro, image quality improves dramatically. In fact, Horizon might just take better advantage of the new hardware than just about any other game we've tested to date. For starters, the pixel count comes in at a full 2160p using checkerboard rendering, which means an image that maps directly onto the pixel grid of a 4K display, eliminating traces of upscale blur in the process. Checkerboard rendering feels like an obvious step for the team, with Gorilla standing as one of the first developers to embrace alternate rendering techniques, techniques such as temporal reprojection, which was utilized with the multiplayer portion of Shadowfall in order to achieve higher frame rates. We've seen full 2160p checkerboarding in other games as well, such as Rise of the Tomb Raider, but the results here are decidedly more impressive due to a very high quality anti-aliasing solution. Distant detail remains remarkably crisp, while shimmering and in-surface aliasing are kept to an absolute minimum. It's one of the cleanest looking console games we've ever played. The Pro version also features improved anisotropic filtering, as well as a couple other enhancements we'll discuss later on. Owners of 1080p displays can also breathe a sigh of relief. Horizon offers full support for downsampling. Image quality is certainly impressive but there is so much more to the visuals on display here. What stands out perhaps more than anything else in the game is the environment itself. Horizon features one of the most richly detailed open worlds we've encountered in any modern open world game. Mountainous terrain in ruined cities stretch out before you filled to the brim with incidental detail and wildlife. Foliage blows gently in the wind as trees and ruined skyscrapers dot the landscape. An effective level of detail system is used here to minimize visible pop-in as well. Watch the distance closely here. You can see the more detailed models swapping in as you approach, but the effect is subtle enough that it doesn't prove distracting. All of this comes together to give the impression of a remarkably solid and stable world to explore. The amount of sheer detail on display in any single scene showcases a richness not often found in console open world experiences. This detailed world is coupled with an evolution of Gorilla's lighting technology. This time, the team has transitioned to a fully real-time time of day system. At any point, the world lighting can be shifted around dynamically with shadows and lighting reacting accordingly. The way lighting interacts with materials is considered as well. The physically based material system first introduced in Shadowfall is present and enhanced here. Horizon does adopt a more stylized design to be sure but its materials do appear incredibly lifelike, especially when you see the contrast between natural materials such as wood and man-made metalwork. That said, while the lighting featured in the game is absolutely beautiful, we didn't spot any sort of bounce lighting in the game, suggesting that global illumination is not in play. 
a fair trade-off in this case as the end results are still very impressive. Another interesting point centers on how the world itself is built. While few details are currently available at the moment, one of the game's chief programmers has described a GPU-based procedural placement system in which elements such as rocks, foliage, wildlife, and even sound effects are all placed in real time using compute shaders. In fact, there is an efficiency behind the design of the game as a whole which has enabled the team to not only build this beautiful world, but also define quests and other functionality using a node graph system originally created for Killzone Shadowfall. With Horizon, the system has been expanded beyond its original purpose, in which it was originally used to define audio behavior of objects in Killzone, to now support quests and other key systems. From what we can tell, this system resembles the feature found within Unreal Engine 4 and is key to unleashing artists and other designers upon the game without relying on main programmers for implementation. This isn't the kind of thing an end user is going to notice, but it does demonstrate a certain maturity within the toolset, which should prove useful for other developers such as Kojima Productions. Now returning to the world itself, atmosphere is further enhanced through a dynamic weather system alongside an incredibly impressive volumetric cloud simulation. The clouds were considered a key part of the scenery during development, and great effort was poured into discovering an efficient but beautiful way to dynamically generate real-time cloud patterns that take light absorption into account. When light enters a cloud in real life, these light rays reflect off of water droplets and ice particles within the cloud before becoming visible to our eyes. The team spent time studying the very dynamics of clouds while determining the most efficient way to simulate this within a game world, and the results are indeed impressive. A far cry from the more traditional skybox techniques used in previous games. Horizon also makes use of true volumetric light shafts throughout the game. Beams of light can slice through the world and fill the screen with an atmospheric haze. It's another effect that we first found in Killzone Shadowfall, and it works every bit as well here. You can see how that really benefits the atmosphere in this scene. The way the sun haze sort of hangs in the air, and the way the light shafts slice through scenery. It looks great. On the flip side, the method used for rendering water reflections doesn't quite inspire the same reaction. Screen space reflections are present, of course, but only in limited capacity. Most of the reflections seem to rely exclusively on cube maps instead. Streams of water such as this are much better looking in motion, though. Of course, the water never actually reacts to the characters moving through it, either. The same can be said of the foliage throughout the game. Running through a dense forest or a grassy field, much of the visible foliage does not react as Aloy runs through it, perhaps a sacrifice necessary to achieve such stable performance. Still, the presentation of the environment as a whole is absolutely incredible in this game. This is easily one of the best looking open world games ever made. Now situated within this beautiful world is a range of detailed characters. Aloy, the game's protagonist, is presented with detailed clothing that moves and reacts realistically as she runs through the world, while her hair is a complex weave of textures and geometry that behave as you would expect. The way her model reacts realistically with lighting is also remarkable here. and the close-ups of the characters tend to look pretty great in most cases, with excellent shading, but the stylized appearance can result in situations in which the characters look somewhat less realistic than you might hope. You'll encounter a wide variety of major and minor characters throughout the world, of course, all sporting plenty of detail on their own. Many incidental NPCs can be found across the land, and each is suitably detailed. A crowd system is in use as well, enabling scenes with lots of individual characters grouped together, all animated nicely. You're not going to see anything like Assassin's Creed here, mind you, but it works pretty well within the context of the game. The real star of the show, however, is almost certainly the machines found wandering across the game world. From the sleek watchers, to the breathtaking long necks. 
Each machine is superbly detailed, both in terms of construction and materials. The realistic play of light off of each metal plate helps ground them within the environment, while the wires and mesh acting as connective tissue lends them an almost organic appearance and motion. The design and movement of these creatures is truly outstanding and a high point for the game's presentation. When the machines and the player engage one another, we also see the robust animation system in action, as well as some neat physics interactions. Animation is a strong point for Horizon. Animation blending is used to great effect, enabling Aloy to seamlessly present a wide variety of expressions and movements at once. The game feels extremely fluid to play as a result, at least in most situations. Animation is further refined thanks to inverse kinematics calculations, which allow Aloy's feet and body to shift naturally based on the slope of the terrain. You can see this when running both up and down the hill here. Pay close attention to the way her feet intersect with the terrain. The way the creatures move across the landscape and attack the player looks excellent as well. When encountering these foes, the machines can actually trample down trees and buildings as well. And not only does it look cool, but it actually figures into gameplay at points since it can become difficult to hide from an aggressive beast on your trail when it destroys your cover. This also highlights some of the impressive particles and effects work in play. Just look at this action here. And speaking of effects, Horizon makes excellent use of both Motion Blur and Bokeh Depth of Field. Motion Blur looks excellent and isn't strong to the point of distraction. It is fully applied to all character movement, but is of course also applied to the camera, which helps make moving through the world feel completely fluid. As for the Depth of Field effect, well, we see it here whenever you engage in conversations with various characters. A beautiful soft focus effect is used behind those characters. These types of scenes definitely help highlight the fidelity on display here between the excellent post-processing and the intricately detailed character models. It really is a sight to behold. We also have shadow map quality to consider here. The filtering used on these shadows is absolutely superb in this game. The edges are clean and devoid of any visible artifacts that you typically see in larger games like this. The downside of course is the limited distance in which high quality shadows are actually displayed. The shadow cascade quickly jumps from razor sharp to rather blurry. Fortunately, it's not hugely distracting here, but it is something you'll notice specifically in foliage-dense areas. Another interesting thing to consider here is texture quality. The difference I mentioned earlier between PS4 and PS4 Pro can be found here. Textures appear sharper and more detailed when played on a PS4 Pro, with extra fine detail visible throughout these surfaces. When combined with the resolution increase, the game just looks noticeably sharper all around. So we've established then that Horizon looks great, but one of the potential downfalls of any open world game are the loading times. After dealing with the incredibly lengthy waiting times in titles like The Witcher 3, Horizon feels like a breath of fresh air. Okay, so the startup loading time here when you first boot the game up is not especially quick and can still take 40 seconds to complete. But it's the loading you encounter upon death that makes all the difference. In most cases, it takes less than 10 seconds to reload after you die or restart from a checkpoint. Fast travel can take a little while longer if you choose to use it, but again, it's quite acceptable. The basic idea is this. Once you're in the world, things load at a reasonable speed here and it never bogs down the experience. Oh, and I should also mention that the loading times are virtually identical between the PS4 and PS4 Pro using the default drives. It's also worth mentioning the performance here again. For all of the incredible visuals on display in this game, what makes it most impressive of all is the stability of the frame rate. Horizon delivers a near flawless 30 frames per second experience on both the PS4 
and the PS4 Pro in most situations. There is no stuttering here, no hitching, or any other interruption to fluidity. The frame pacing is perfect. It's a buttery smooth game which makes the simple act of traversal feel so much more enjoyable. A huge triumph by the development team here. One additional detail worth pointing out here is the quality of the pre-rendered cutscenes. While the game focuses on real-time cinematics for the most part, some of its bigger scenes, such as the introduction, are presented as pre-rendered movies instead. If you had one. As a game that has been in development for so long, there was always the chance that these movies would have been captured and stored at 1080p. But instead, Gorilla has opted to produce full 4K versions of these videos, and they look great. Otherwise, we might become like the faithless old ones. It's also worth taking a moment to showcase the map and menu system. Horizon makes use of a fully 3D top-down map designed to display actual depth in the terrain. There is a huge variation in height across the game world, and this map system makes it easy to better understand the layout of the world simply by scrolling across it. It really is a beautifully designed system. Beyond that, while the game itself is 30 frames per second, the entire menu system is actually updated at 60 frames per second instead. This makes for a much faster and more responsive navigation experience as you pour through the various options. It's a small detail, mind you, but it adds a lot to the game's presentation. The HUD system itself is also interesting, in that it can be fully customized. Everything defaults to an on state, but it's possible to disable all of the various HUD elements or switch them to a dynamic mode if you choose. Beyond that, all of the fonts and graphics used in the game are rendered at a crisp, native 4K if you're using the PS4 Pro, and of course still look good on a regular PS4 too. But that's not to say everything here is pitch perfect. There are a few very minor issues with the game that I ran across that are worth mentioning. Minor things like this stood out along the way, though really not a huge deal in the grand scheme of things. But the main problem is tied to sound design. When engaged in conversations with any NPC, the game pans the voice track to the right. I'm using a 7.1 system here, and dialogue is generally played through the center channel and the right speaker. It's unbalanced and distracting. A very strange decision indeed. Of course, when you listen to these same sequences in stereo mode, such as when I captured the game, this isn't a problem at all, and voice plays back through both the left and right channels so it's really a problem reserved for those using surround sound setups. But I can't spare any braves to help you. Who said I needed help? You'll clear the valley, all by yourself. There's also the camera system. While I adapted to it over time, far too often the game positions Aloy to the right side of the screen. Many games allow you to select the dominant shoulder, but Horizon sort of jumps back and forth between the two, and it doesn't always feel quite right. Definitely distracting from time to time. Lastly, there's the lip sync. While it's perfectly fine for main characters and whatnot, once you start taking on side quests and talking to less critical NPCs, well, things start to look a little off. You came back! How did we fare? See what I mean? It basically feels as if the quality of the lip sync is tied directly to the importance of the character, with main characters receiving the best quality facial animations, mid-tier characters looking reasonably okay, and low-tier characters looking just kinda off. Overall though, there really isn't that much to complain about here, this is a very polished game. And Horizon is a remarkable title not only for continuing to uphold Gorilla's tradition of producing technically astounding games, but also for delivering big time on the game part. This is, without a doubt, the best game Gorilla has crafted to date. It plays like a dream, the narrative and world design are engaging, and it looks incredible. A real triumph all around. We may not be in the business of actually reviewing games here on Digital Foundry, but I have to recommend this one. And with that, we've come to the end of another video. If you enjoyed this look at the game, be sure to like, subscribe, and follow us on Twitter. And until next time, this is John, signing off.